So, Sam's. Hey! That's a wicked collaboration, you know. Lamborghini! <laughs> Tyro! We had the pony house, right? That's it. Hi! <laughs> okay! Are you ready? Here I'll tell you one little story. Listen! Listen! Good day, friends. And welcome to another edition of Easy Mass Tutor. And today we're going to solve some very, very easy problems that. I find very exciting for each and every one of us. So first of all, I want to say thank you to my returning subscribers, my supporters, those that believe so much in Easy Mass Tutor. I love you so much. And if you're new to this channel, you're welcome. I promise you, you'll not be disappointed. In this space, mathematics is easy. Mathematics is fun, all right? So I'm gonna do some, tackle some problems. So when you see this kind of problems, maybe you see a number and then you see a superscript. There's a little number on top of that number, which is known as an exponential. Alright? Don't be scared. When you see those kind of numbers, what you do is understand that an exponential is a form of writing numbers that shortens those numbers or helps the numbers to be more solvable or more approachable. All right for instance maybe your cupboard you have clothes that are scattered what do you do to make your clothes more acceptable you fold your clothes you arrange your clothes into sets all right maybe your shirts are one set your trousers are one set your skirt are one set your shoes are in a set so that's what exponentials are all about if we want to arrange this number in twos we have a power right if the number has a factor of 2 and is a very large number, then we have what? A power of 2. That's a way of managing that particular number. So, the same thing with the square root sign. Alright? So, when you see the exponentials or the square root sign, just know that we're just trying to arrange the numbers in a more manageable set. So, let's jump right ahead to this problem. This problem, we're looking for the value of x. The problem is the cube root. When you see a root sign with 3, means it's a cube root. That means it's a number raised to the power 1 over 3. That is the cube root. The cube root times the square root of 2. The square root is a number raised to the power half. That is the square root. All over 8 equal to 2 raised to the power x. So now how do we find the power of x for this complex looking problem? It's not complex, but it looks complex, right? Is to make this side, this side of the equal sign is the left hand side, sorry, is the right hand side. While this side of the equal sign is the left hand side. So we have to make the right hand side similar to the left hand side. That means the right hand side should have two raised to a power. We, have, we need to simplify this expression to end up being what? 2 raised to a power. Then when it equates to 2 raised to power x, the power of the 2 on the right hand side is the value of what? x. So let's go right ahead to solve this. Okay? So how do we do that? First of all, let's write, draw the division line. That's the division line. Now we know that 2, 8 is the same thing as what? 8 is the same thing as what? 2 times 2 times 2. So how many 2's do we have here? We have 1, 2, 3. So that is 2 raised to power 3. Okay? Then what do we have here? We have 16. Now you know 16 is what? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So 16 is 2 raised to the power 4. 16 is 2 raised to the power 4. We will still put on the cube root symbol, right? Then we have 2 square. Remember I said 2, sorry, 2, two root, the square root of 2. Remember I said the square root of 2 is the same thing as 2 raised to the power half. So we'll write 2 raised to the power half. Then we'll bring down our 2 raised to the power x from 
the left hand side of the equation. So let's further simplify this. We're going to remove this cube root sign and turn it to an exponent. So how will it be? It will be 2 raised to the power 4 bracket 1 over 3 times 2 raised to the power 1 over 2. All over 2 raised to the power 3. All right? Good. Then we'll bring this down to be 2 raised to the power x. So there's a rule in indices that joins these two powers. Right? When there's a bracket, it means it is 4 times 1 over 3. Okay? And then there's also a rule that joins two powers that are joined by a multiplication. And that is known as the addition law of indices. So let's do that right away. What are we going to have? We're going to have here will be 2 raised to the power 4 over 3, right? Plus 1 over 2, because they are both 2, base 2, minus 3. When you see a division of a power and they are the same basis, the power will be subtracted. So write a 2 here, a big 2 here. So the first power here is 1. We have 4 over 3, right? Then remember I said we're going to add this because of this multiplication. So we'll say plus, plus 1 over 2. Then we'll say minus 3. Minus 3 equal to 2 raised to the power x. So that's it. So I told you there's the power on the right hand side will be equal to the power on the left hand side. So if we get the, the, the value of this, we'll get the value of x. So let's do that right away, okay? So we'll say x is equal to 4 over 3 plus 1 over 2 minus 3. Minus 3. So let's do that right away. Let's do that right away. We'll say, we'll say is equal to, the common denominator here is what? Let's just say 3 over 1. Common, common denominator or the LCM of this 3 to 1 is what? 6. It's 6. So what do we do? We'll say 6 divided by 3 give us 2. 2 times 8 gives us what? 2 times 4 gives us what? 8. 6 divided by 2 gives us 3. 3 times 1 is what? 3. 6 divided by 1 is 6 times 3 gives us what? Minus 18. Minus 18. So if we add this up, what do we have? 8 plus 3, according to board mass, you have to add the positive terms before you go to the negative. 8 plus 3 gives us what? 11. Right? And then, 11 minus 18 gives us what? Gives us minus 7. Because 18 is larger than 11. So, 18 minus 11 is 7. And because 18 is negative, the answer will be negative. So, uh, the value of x at the end of the day is what minus 7 all over 6 so x is minus 7 all over 6 so that's how we get the value of x in our problem that's how we get the value of x in our problem so we'll move on to the next problem right away Moving on to the next problem right away, we have another exponential problem here. So the problem gives us a number raised to a power, right? And the power is already in a linear equation. So it's a bit complex. It's not a straightforward number, right? And it's not just a linear equation. It's a linear equation with two variables, x and y, or two unknowns, x and y. So three raised to the power, 2x plus y minus 200 is equal to 43. 
and then we have 7 raised to the power 3x plus 2y minus 300 equal to 43. So how do we solve this? How do we solve this? So, let me shift to this other side so that I can explain better. So I will extend this equation to this side. I'll simplify it, right? So I'll move 200 to the other side. How do I move 200? I'll add both, add 200 to both sides. So that will give us 3 raised to the power 2x plus y. Plus 200 minus 200, that's 0. Then we'll say 43 plus 200 will be what? 243, okay? Then for the other side, we'll have 7 raised to the power 3x plus 2y minus 300 equal to 4, 3, 43. So if we add 300 to both sides, it cancels this out and adds to this side. So we'll have 7 raised to the power 3x plus 2y equal to 3, 4, 3. So now we have something similar to what we have on this other side. Remember what I told you in the first question, right? I told you that the left hand side has to be made similar to the right hand side, okay? So the same way we're gonna make this side similar to this side. Now for this side, we need to look for a power of three, right? For this side, we need to look for a power of seven. And we know, we know that three, that 3 can be broken, 243 can be broken down to factors of 3, right? Which will be 3, right? Okay, let's see how many is gonna uh, how many is gonna come out, right? So we'll say 8, 8, 81, 3 goes here. How many times? 27. Right? Three goes here. Nine. Three goes here. Three. So I'm seeing five times, right? Three times three times three times three times three. Giving us three raised to the power five. That's for this side, right? Now for this part, we're looking for a function or base of seven, right? So let's try. If we put 7 in here, we we'll have 2 times, right? We'll have 2 times. Sorry. We'll have 4 times. 4 times, right? We'll have 4 times. Then remember 6. We'll have what? How many times? We'll have nine times. Then seven will go here once, seven. So we'll have seven times seven times seven, giving us seven raised to the power three. So voila, here comes the solution to our equation. Very easy solution, okay? So let's go back to the beginning and we'll have three raised to the power two x plus y equal to to the raised to the power 5. Then we'll also have 7 raised to the power 3x plus 2y equal to 7 raised to the power 3. Okay? So remember what I said. If the bases are equal, then the powers are equal. If the bases are equal, then the powers are equal. So what are we going to have as a result of that? The equation now becomes We'll bring the powers down 2x plus y equal to 5. Then for this one, 3x plus 2y equal to 3. Are we good? Yeah. So now here we have two simultaneous equations. So we know there are different ways to solve simultaneous equations. Welcome back. Welcome back. So now these problems are simultaneous equations. So it's for us to find the values of x 
and y all right so what i'll do i would use a method i'll say 2x plus y equal to 5 we'll write uh, let me bring it back down 2y is equal to 3 is equal to 3 so i want to equalize this two equation so i'll multiply this by 2 I'll multiply this equation by 2 so that I will have 2y and 2y so I can subtract it. Okay? So what will I have? If I multiply this by 2, I will have 4x. Okay? So let's say 4x. Multiply this by 2, I'll have 2y. Multiply this by 2, I'll have 10. So if I subtract it, if I subtract subtract it. So I will have 10 minus 3 will give me 7. 2y minus 2y will give me 0. 4 minus 3, 4x minus 3x will give me x. I'll multiply this equation by 2 so that I will have 2y and 2y so I can subtract it. Okay, so what will I have? If I multiply this by 2, I will have 4x. Okay, so let's say 4x. Multiply this by 2, I'll have 2y. Multiply this by 2, I'll have 10. So if I subtract it, if I subtract, subtract it. So I'll have 10 minus 3, give me 7. 2y minus 2y will give me 0. 4 minus 3, 4x minus 3x will give me x. Right? So therefore, I have x equal to 7. So from equation 1, I can find the value of y. From equation 1, from equation 1, We say y is equal to 5. This jumps over to this side. Minus 2x. So if I substitute the value of 7, I'll have y equal to 5 minus 2x, which is equal to 5, okay, minus 14. Therefore, y is equal to what? Minus 9. So here we have the values of x and y. Hip hip hip, hooray. Why don't you give yourself a round of applause? Thank you for watching. Stay logged on and booked on to this channel for more exciting videos and solutions of your easy math problems. Thank you for watching. Bye.